About a year ago, Joel from Traditional Motors commissioned me to make a sculpture of a 1915 Harley-Davidson board racer motorcycle. After we completed the, the first motorcycle, he felt the companion piece was in order and we decided that what we would make next would be the 1912 Flying Merkel. Again, it's another board racer motorcycle. Um, hi, I'm Thack from Thack Ironworks. Won't you join me on this journey of the creation of this Flying Merkel? But before we begin, I'd like to uh, throw out a caveat. Um, just want to be very crystal clear on this. This is a sculptural interpretation of a Flying Merkel. This is not a historically accurate uh, scale replica of the bike. Um, Merely an artistic tribute to to the feel and the essence of of that motorcycle. Um, I decided to go stylized on it, and what um, that came out to be was kind of a rat rod, uh, steampunk sort of effect. Um, basically, I used a lot of different metals um, along with leather and wood, um, and then all of them heavily patinaed to create a very dramatic effect. So something that I wanted to uh, capture the look of the bike, the, the, the feel of it, but um, obviously not a scale replica. So let me know how I did. Let's get into it. This project was a three-way split between myself and two of my employees, namely Fish and Ethan. We all spent about an equal amount of time on it. Um, here we have Fish um, piecing together the frame and he's the, our TIG welder, so he's TIG welding the pieces together. Everything on this was, uh, the frame was made out of copper tube that was hammered textured, and then we put a steel core in it for extra rigidity just to make the whole thing solid. Um, so he's just bending up the pieces and putting together the main frame. This whole board track racing thing was quite a phenomenon. Apparently it was, went from about 1910 to maybe 19. 30, and it was really the Wild West. It was extremely dangerous, but I think it was a real like petri dish for the development of motorcycles from uh, from the very beginning um, onto uh, something that we would recognize now as a modern motorcycle, which happened basically over the course of those 20 years. Now the gas tank we made out of uh, a very beat up steel that I had laying out back in the scrap pile. It had been sandblasted and it was all hammered. So I wanted something that was going to be pre-aged when we put it together and it, it really worked out quite well. It's kind of weird working with such a um, distressed material from a starting point. The camera guy did uh, some camera effects on this, kind of desaturated the lighting. I don't even understand all that stuff, but it, it gave a very gritty feel. Uh, which I think is in keeping with the turn of the century sort of vibe that we're trying to go with in these early motorcycles. It does make my hands look very dirty though. <laughs> so here I am um, doing a repousse technique or embossing and, and raising up letters in the pure zinc sheet. Um, this is for the crankcase. So I did a, all the sculpting of that sort of pieces. Um, other things like the, the oil pump and things like that were also done um, by myself using techniques like this. Here's the gas tank ready to be painted and I was able to find an orange spray paint that more or less replicated the Merkel orange. After I had the gas tank painted, then I uh, did a stencil for the lettering. It was different on, on each side, and then I made my actual stencils out of painter's tape. And then painted the lettering white. After the white dried, then I was able to add the black. Because of the complexity of the build and just logistically, it was kind of difficult for us to film every aspect of it, so we only were able to pick up the odd piece here and there, but hopefully it gives you an idea of, of some of what went into the construction. 
few of the components uh, were not made from scratch, things like the, the chain and the sprockets. Sprockets actually, we used the outer rim and I cut out the center and, and did a copper um, piece on the inside just to keep in keeping with the, the hammer texture and the handmadeness of all the other pieces. You see some of the components here just prior to assembly. The wheels also, that was something that was, uh, I had outsourced. They were done with a CAD program and then a CNC mill to grind those out. Just the complexity of them. And also I wanted to keep them nice and round for me to do it by hand. It, there would have been distortions and I, I felt that would have taken away from the effect of the bike. So went with a wooden wheel, which I really like. Very complex build. I did a lot of distressing on the gas tank after I finished it off with actual rust. And then here I'm, I'm doing a little bit of faux rust to, to really give it that distressed rat rod sort of look. That was kind of the aspect of it, the finished work that I wanted to come up with. It's really unbelievable how many hours something like this consumes and you, 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 you get into it and the hours just stretch on and on. And it, my hats are off to um, guys who actually do restore old bikes or, or even old cars and things like that. I know that it's just endless hours to get it to that point. Um, here we were just making a sculpture, not even a functional machine, um, but it was just, it, it took forever, but um, a lot of fun and very um, rewarding um, payoff at the end. I really like the result. The seat was made of steel, which I shaped um, and then added some leather over top and again, all the distressing and the patinas to make it all flow together. So we got into the final assembly, it became complicated to trying to logistically figure out how to best put the thing together and we had a couple of false starts on that but eventually it all came together and I'm just uh, very pleased how everything came about and I really enjoyed the team effort of my guys we, we really came together on this one and it was just a lot of fun. So hopefully you enjoyed our video here and gave you a little bit of insight as to what went into this. I would love to hear your comments um, and just let me know what you think of the whole thing. If you like the idea of doing these tribute style sculptures that are not actually a real replica. I uh, just want to know your thoughts on that. Uh, please check out the rest of our channel. Please subscribe um, if you're interested in this sort of content and even consider checking us out on Patreon and helping support more content like this so that is it finished product that's it back out see ya